everyone, it's Anya here. I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making butterflies. You can see I've made quite a few and in a previous video we made the small ones so today we are making the big ones. This is a cotton I have been using. It's a uh, Sachenmeyer Catania cotton. It's 100% cotton and it's um, mercerized. Um, the size of the hook that they prescribe is a two and a half to three and a half because it's a fine and that means I think it's obviously, yes, it's it's thinner than DK. So I, am, I have been using a uh, two and a half hook and that's given me the um you know sort of the tightness of the stitches that I liked and of course you need your scissors and your darning needle now the colors are, are described in numbers so this color is 0173 this color is 0124 this color is 0130 this color is 0201 and this color is 0261 so these as I said I've been using for quite a few projects so let's get started so to get started on our bigger butterfly we are going to make a slip knot insert your hook and adjust it and we are going to chain eight so one two three four five six seven and eight then you are going to go back to your first chain that you made insert into there and create a circle by doing a slip stitch Then you are going to chain two, one, two, and then you are going to do another two double crochets into the circle. Chain two, and now we are going to do clusters of three double crochets into the circle and we have to make sure we have eight clusters so this is our first cluster so now we are doing our second cluster which consists of three double crochets and then in between the clusters we do two chains so next cluster three double crochets and then we do two chains. Now you will find that your circle fills up so you'll have to just scoot them over like so to make space enough so you can get your eight clusters in there. I will see you when you have done your eight clusters. I have now done my last cluster, I've done two chains and I am going to find the first two chains that I did when we started the round. This then here, which looks like a third V, but that's actually the top of this double crochet here, you go under that one and making sure you don't use the end, you do a slip stitch in there. And that slip stitch really now creates the top of that chain and that completes like, you know, sort of, it looks like a double crochet more now. So I'm going to change colour. So I cut off this cotton and I am going to get started with my next colour. Okay, so we're ready for round three. We are going to start with a slip knot as we are starting with a standing stitch 
then we are going to look at our work and we are going to find the chain two spaces that we have made in between the clusters and those are the ones that we are going to be working in. So pretending you are already crocheting, yarn over, insert into one of the spaces, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two and that last bit might be a little bit difficult I just hold on to it with my fingers like that and go through that loop there so that's my first double crochet I am going to do three double crochets so that's the second one and the third one so those are my three double crochets now I'm going to do two chains and then another three double crochets into the same chain space <clears throat> so in each chain space around you are going to place three double crochets two chains three double crochets so yarn over into the next chain space and you do your three double crochets chain three uh, chain two <laughs> sorry and three double crochets there we go okay so I will see you when you have done that eight times because obviously you have eight chain two spaces I have now come to the end of my round here I have just done my last three double crochets I am going to do a slip stitch but this here this standing stitch always closes up for me so I go into the next V and I do a slip stitch and that slip stitch then comes on top of that closed up stitch and that makes that top better so that is my reasoning anyway <laughs> so that's for that color Okay, we are now ready for round four. And once again, we are going to do a slip knot. Insert your hook and pull it closed. Now we are going to work in two locations. So first of all, there is the location in between the two clusters. So that's just in between the two double crochets here. And then we have another location where we have the two chains and where we have a little hole to work in. So we're going to start in between the two clusters and we are going to do a standing single crochet. So just pretend as if you are already crocheting and you're doing your single crochet. Then we are going to go in between the two clusters with the chain. So we're working in the chain two space and in there we are going to do seven double crochets. So let's get started. We have one, two, three, four. Now make sure you keep scooting them over. Four, five, six, and seven. Okay, let me count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. Now scoot them over a little bit more. Okay. You then do one, two, three chains. Then you are going to go back to the first chain here and you do a little pico. So that means you pull up a loop and you pull it through the loop on your hook. There we go. So that's my pico. And then you do another seven double crochets into that same hole. So I just keep scooting them over. This is always a little bit, yeah, there we go. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so we have seven double crochets, one pico made of 
three chains and then a slip stitch into the first chain and another seven double crochets into that same hole. Then we start again by doing a single crochet in between the clusters and then we repeat what we have just done, seven double crochets, a picot and seven double crochets into, oh that split a little bit, into the chain two spaces. So I will see you at the end of this round when you have completed eight of these wings. I have now come to the end of my round. I have done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of those petals or wings better. And I am now going to, when my hook wants to be in that loop, <laughs> I'm now going to do a slip stitch into that first single crochet that we did. So I'm just going to go in there, whichever way you can, and bring the cotton through and through the loop on your hook. There we go. So that is the body of the butterfly, fin or better, the wings of the butterfly finished. There we go. And now we are going to create the body. Now for the small butterflies, I created the body by just chaining, but I don't think this is thick enough for the bigger butterflies. So I want to have sort of like a thicker chain, so to speak. So I'm going to do a quick um, drawstring bag string. So a drawstring. Um, I've got uh, my cotton here and I'm going to do a certain length on this side, sort of like 40 centimeters. Now we make a slip knot in there. So we have two ends on our slip knot. One you hold like you normally do. The other one you hold in between these two fingers here. Then you pick up the front loop from the back to the front, the back loop from the front to the back. You hold on to that knot and you bring that last loop through both loops on your hook. There we go. Same thing again and pull it through and again and pull it through and I sort of hold on to the end. I keep everything tensioned, so to speak, to make it a little bit easier to create this little body of my butterfly. Now, you don't need it to be very long at all. I tend to just do a little bit and then I check to see if it's long enough. So let's see. By now I should be able <laughs> to have enough to show you how I'm going to measure that. There we go. So that is my little drawstring bag. String. <laughs> and we are going to fold the butterfly like this. And then I bring this to the front like that and I go round it and obviously I need to do a little bit more so I am just going to do that now. Okay so I literally did only a couple of stitches more and I found that it was long enough so you wrap it round your butterfly like this okay so I now have my both ends on this side sort of turn it round as well as you can basically it's a little bit fiddly then you are going to insert into the back here into that first stitch that you did and I just take one of the one of the ends and I do a slip stitch with it through the loop on my hook so there we go so that's that and then I just do three chains and I do another pico. There we go. So that sort of made the start of the head and I just tend to do another slip stitch. It, It's just, you know, it, it doesn't really matter what you do here. You can also just cut it off and finish it with your um, 
um, needle, you know, just sewing it a little, a little bit. So I cut it off quite long, so I have a little bit to work with, okay? And <clears throat> then I pull that out, and then I just insert my needle, or I, you know, there we go, put the needle on, and I just go into the body a little bit, sort of going over the head, making it a little bit bigger, and creating a little bit more of a, a round shape, or not. <laughs> Sometimes it works better than others, but it's just so that you sort of, yeah, it makes it a little bit tighter, and I go around it again a couple of times because you need to make the head a little bit bigger, obviously, because you've got a bigger butterfly as well. So I'm just keep going around. And when I think my cotton here is nearly finished, I go in and I come out um, sort of where the antenna would come out on the head and I pull it up. There we go. And then you cut. I cut that off sort of that sort of length that uh, would stay up on its own. And then of course you do the same thing with the next one. And that then finishes our butterfly. Let's just, I just try and go in wherever I can. I mean, it gets harder. You can see I'm, I'm really pulling here to get yeah, the needle through. There we go. And we go round the side again, just to make it a little bit rounder. But like I said, this all depends on what you've done and how you want it to look. Look, there, there we are. It's got a little nice head now. So now I'm just going to try and come out. There we go, on top of the head. And see if I can create uh, the antenna. <laughs> um, yeah, so with... Let me just do this a little bit closer. Oh my word. Yes, it's through. Um, so with the body um, obviously you're going to have to measure that because it all depends on how big your actual butterfly is as well so you'll have to just see how big uh, you know how big it turns out just roll it round not too loose see this is quite okay I can still put something in you know my finger will still go in between it could be a little bit tighter but I think it's perfect like this so it's fine um, and this now holds the butterfly together. Um, yeah, what can you do with these butterflies? I've made quite a few now. I just enjoyed making them. I am going to use them for a project. Not quite sure yet what, but you could possibly use them. For example, if you have a hairband, you can sew them on and then you'll have a, a nice elastic there. If you have one of these, you could put these on with um, hot glue gun, with hot glue. See, you could put it on like that with a hot glue and then you can make your ponytail like that. There's so many other things you can do with these. For example, a mobile, you know, for above a baby's crib. Or what I've been thinking about is having um, a branch. So I want to go for a walk soon and maybe if I can collect a branch and just hang them off the branch and then just display it, um, you know, in my, my living room or something. Um, something like that um, with fish wire, you know, so it, it, you can't see um, the wire. And then they'll be dangling in the air. So yes, so many uh, things that you could do with them. But I hope you enjoyed these tutorials. I have thoroughly enjoyed making these. And, oh, I'm just going to give them away as presents as well, you know, because they're little cute little things. Sew them on a purse, sew them on something that you've, other that, that you've made, even on a blanket, um, you know. Anyway, <laughs> enough of me waffling about. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.